Don't it's February the 17th, <laughs> 2011, meeting of the Farragut Municipal Planning League to order, please. Um, <clears throat> we're going to start tonight with the Citizens Forum, and I know Ruth has an announcement about some training. Uh, yes, there will be an MTAS training session held on April 13th from 8.30 to 12.30. Uh, this will, if you went to the training session last fall, this is a different one. They offer different ones on alter, alternate years. Uh, so if anybody is interested in attending the training, just let me know and we will. What specific, do you have a specific title this time? Topic? Subject? Uh -huh. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm afraid. I just know that it is uh, the MTAS Planning Commissioner training, and they don't do the same one back to back. So okay. downtown. I don't, yes, it would be down in the same place it was okay. last fall. Uh, the MTAS building, the old, the old Miller building. Miller building. Um, Again, I want to. I've said this before, but I encourage anybody who can to to go these are, are very informative um, they do a really good job of prevent, presenting a subject matter that you might think was a little on the dry side uh, they do a really good job of making it interesting uh, also one of the things I've said before is I enjoy meeting the people that come from other places um, you might not think that Farragut has much in common with some of the rural counties around here, but you'd be surprised at the common uh, situations that we come up with. And so it's always <clears throat> interesting to uh, make contact with those people. Um, anybody else on the Planning Commission have any comments tonight? I do have one, actually, and I meant to do it last month. I just wanted to publicly thank uh, Daryl for uh, the work that he, he put into coming up with a solution to uh, Everett Road that I'd asked about in November. Uh, they, it did qualify for a guardrail and it was installed about four days prior to our previous meeting. And I neglected to mention it then, so I wanted to thank him because I'm very grateful for that. So, A lot of people are a lot safer going around yeah. through there And now. I've heard a lot of good comments about it too, so I wanted to recognize him for that. Oh, good. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Anyone in the audience have a... Um, comment to make tonight Will you come up to the uh, podium please and tell us who you are and give us an address 315 Knoxville Tennessee 37939 uh, I come before you this evening with my hat in my hand and uh, expressing an apology on some of my comments I made before the town of Farragut and the Board of Aldermen and the mayor the other evening uh, at 440, this is regarding a draw on a letter of credit for Summer Oak subdivision over off of Old Stage Road. At 445 this afternoon, Mr. Tom Hale, who I have a tremendous amount of respect for, uh, sent over a document uh, on an amended letter of credit that was done in 2009. Originally, the letter of credit for Summer Oak subdivision, which was done in 2007, <laughs> was a maintenance letter for sidewalks, walking trails, roads, and detention pond. There was no mention of completion of any of those items. It was a maintenance uh, letter of credit. Unbeknownst to me, in 2009, the letter of credit was amended when it was renewed with my bank. Mr. Hale forwarded that to me. That was, to my recollection, the first time I had seen the amended document. Apparently, or what appears to may have happened, it may have been a simple inadvertent error on behalf of the town of Farragut, whereby I was not required to have, or was I was not, I did not put up, or was not required to put up, a letter of credit for completion of the sidewalks in the subdivision. And then it appears that the town of Farragut came back at a later date on the renewal of the letter of credit and entered in the new language specifically saying for completion of the sidewalk. And if you are familiar with letters of credit, which if you're lucky, you don't ever have to deal with them, um, the bank signed the letter of credit. I don't sign the letter of credit. And until Mr. Hale had sent that to me, I don't recall ever seeing that, although Mr. Smoke and Mr. Um, uh, Palmer, who I met with on Tuesday, made reference to it. I had not seen or recall seeing that document. So it appears that there was a uh, inadvertent error on behalf of the town, and I was using 
incomplete information by which to make some pretty strong accusations against the town and um, the, the administration and for which I am here to apologize. I would like to get this resolved if we move forward. Um, I think we all understand and appreciate the times that the builders and developers are in and if we can figure out an amicable way to resolve these issues, it works to everyone's benefit. You got a package of information from me today uh, via email, which you may or may not have had time to read. You get a whole lot of information. And I know you can't read everything. Uh, that was sent prior to my receipt of the letter from Mr. Hale. Uh, we will follow up with Mr. Hale and the town administration and figure out how we can move forward and resolve this issue. I appreciate it. Thanks for giving me a chance to speak. Thank you for coming. We'll move on to the anybody else in the audience tonight. We have something that's not related to any of the items on the agenda. Then we'll move on to the approval of the minutes. Does anyone have any changes, corrections to the minute? <clears throat> Do I have a motion of approval? Move for approval. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number, item number three, discussion and public hearing on a plat of correction for the cottages at Price Farm, phase one, lots 85 through 88, zoned R-1, OSMR, to modify platted building envelopes, <clears throat> cottages of Price Farm applicant. Minor amendment, as we discussed when we went through this a few weeks ago with regards to <coughs> Uh, what would constitute this was a problem with the building envelope the actual building that was constructed um, did not fit within the platted building envelopes uh, for example they they expanded in this area right in here and then there was some encroachment into the the outdoor area uh, so this literally wasn't just a couple of feet off. It did not change the character of the buildings or anything, but it, it did require a plat of correction. And um, at your places is the recommendation. We are recommending approval of the plat subject to the seven items being addressed, the last item being meeting all town requirements. So just some minor wording changing. That still said 100%. We figured they really didn't want to go with 100% based on Mr. Russell's statement, so suggested they go with the 75%. They could stay with the 100%, but we just figured they really didn't intend for that. <laughs> Have something you'd like to add to, add to that? No, not really. Just uh, Ruth, pretty well. Explained. I'm Garrett Tucker, the surveyor with uh, Robert Campbell and Associates. Um, that you know, we're just needing to change those building envelopes so that uh, to address the the change in the the buildings that that, that was made. I have any questions? They're pretty minor adjustments, aren't they? Yeah, just a couple of feet here and there. Is yeah, a uh, typical developer change to changed his mind you know what he was going to be which they're, they're trying to build what they what they think they can market so that's well I know yeah and we had platted it and laid it out a certain way and then they decided to mix you know they have like four different size units a one two and a three and a four and they decided to put a you know a three over here instead of a two and, and you know just kind of switched it around a little bit and it and there's just enough difference in the in the units to uh, to cause some problems. So. Uh, yeah. Now one of them, they're they like I said, they have a one, two, three, and a four. They've added now. A fifth one that's that's a little bit larger unit uh, to, to get into a, a little more another you know another market niche hopefully and uh, that that's what's going on with, with uh, one of the lots it has a little bit bigger garage uh, than the others and uh, so we uh, 
But we're trying to think of a way because I know I've talked to Ruth about the uh, because we've had to do you know y'all probably know we've had to do several of these so uh, as we get into future phases you know we've got quite a bit already platted now but if you know if we ever get along get along to phase two and three we'll, we'll try to try to design it and lay it out in such a way so that we, maybe they have a little more flexibility and we still meet all the requirements and, and but but if they make a slight change it won't cause us to have to go back and do a replat for of the building envelopes so that, that's I've got some ideas that, uh, that we'll we'll try to incorporate uh, in future plats Paul well, Ken made that reference that he that they were going to go with a more generic box rather than something so specific as we had suggested to them make it a little easier favor aye. aye opposed thank you for coming tonight item number four discussion and public hearing on the brooklawn subdivision plat and a variance request from the farragut subdivision regulations to not require walking trail construction zone pcd c1 and r2 uh, blanchard and calhoun applicants <coughs> A couple of you were on the Planning Commission when this was initially report, approved and recorded. And uh, at the time they recorded the plat, they established <coughs> the walking trail where this yellow is. And it's adjacent to uh, Turkey Creek. And it runs from <coughs> the... South Campbell Station Road this is being South Campbell Station Road and it runs along outside the aquatic buffer of Turkey Creek uh, back to the driveway that comes off of Concord Road this being Concord Road and it ties in at that point uh, they had planned on proceeding with more development in this area sooner uh, there have been some changes internally with how they have with how they've been doing things and uh, they would really like to have their letter of credit released for a variety of reasons because it kind of holds up their money. But also, we're not really sure when this can actually be built because they're not proceeding with development in this area at that time. And it's really hard to calculate a dollar figure uh, for extended periods of time, and it creates a problem. And they asked us, how can we deal with this situation? And staff recommended that they have come back to us with a variance request to release for to relieve them of the requirement to build the walking trail at this time and then at that way the letter of credit could be released this is very similar to what we dealt with with the CSW plat on Kingston Pike there at Fox Den that we tied the we died we tied the completion to future development so in this particular case we are recommending approval of the variance and the subdivision plat provided the following changes are made to the plat. And basically what we are asking for, um, number five is really the heart of it, is that we're saying that they add a plat note, and this is very similar to what they did with the CSW plat, is a walking trail located on lot nine, and this is lot nine right here, the whole thing, this is lot nine. A walking trail located on lot 9 adjacent to the Turkey Creek aquatic buffer in the platted walking trail easement shall be designed and installed at the time of future development of lot 9. Any building permits or further subdivision of the property shall constitute future development. The total approximate length of this trail is 2,161 linear feet. The 20-foot Greenway walking trail easement shall be centered on the actual tra trail 10 feet each side of center line. During the development of Lot 9, with the Town of Farragut approval, the Greenway walking trail easement, as shown, may be modified to accommodate actual trail construction. 